What's going on guys? Welcome back to the DX Gamer Show. My name is Mike, aka Operation DX, and welcome to episode 18, where it is all business going on around here at the Space Center. We need to complete some contracts, because we are starting to run low on money, because, well, I was doing missions on my own, and that was probably a... It wasn't necessarily a bad idea. I had fun doing it. But uh, during the next couple of episodes, it is all business. We are going to go and do some contracts. So the first thing we are going to do is deploy our outpost on Ike. This is a mission that we picked up quite a little while back. And now we are going to complete it. And the conditions to complete this contract was... At the time, I thought to be rather extensive. But now that we've unlocked some stuff in the tech tree, it's not such a hard task anymore so we just had to build an outpost that could support 12 kerbals have a antenna array that can transmit uh produce its own power and uh, i think that's about it yeah so not too big of a deal just uh on our way back to duna so pretty much um standard operating procedure not really i mean flying to other planets can be uh, a challenge However, if you build yourself a sufficient rocket to do the task and use those maneuver nodes, shouldn't have too much trouble. Um, sometimes I think some people run into trouble on the approach to the planet because sometimes you just get that encounter and you don't tweak the encounter. When you get there, you're like super far away from the planet. So that's something that I always do. I always tweak and make sure that I'm relatively close to the planet and another thing that can be kind of challenging is setting yourself up into a prograde orbit. You got to make sure that you're moving in the same direction that the planet and the moons are spinning. Otherwise, you may run into some trouble if you want to encounter, well, if you want to encounter the moon, say, like in this episode where we want to get Ike all set up. That could be a problem if we were heading retrograde and we had to spend a ton of fuel to fix that if uh, we didn't fix that early on. So it is important. Anyway, throughout this series, there has been a lot of really great comments and suggestions, especially in the recent part of the last few episodes. And I really do appreciate that. And I take them into consideration depending on how you know valid they are. Um, <laughs> I too make some Bad judgment calls. Uh, it has nothing to do with the LVN engine. <laughs> oh, I should just erase those videos. But you know what? I'm just going to keep them up. Uh, I had my rant video. I did my thing. Um, I was mostly wrong. It's cool. It's okay to be wrong. You know? It's, it's human. Anyway, being super excited about the whole resource system I may have gotten a little bit too zealous to just deploy my mining rig wherever because I wanted to see resources being mined that were core gameplay in Kerbal Space Program. Uh, so was looking forward to that. And with that came a whole bunch of suggestions which are completely valid. Now, I've already got a station set up in the orbit of Minmus, although the station wasn't really set up in mind for doing interplanetary flights and refueling and stuff so i might have to replace the station but the majority of the suggestions was to move my rig from the moon over to minmus which is absolutely legitimate um should have no problem doing that if i have a full tank of ore and a full tank of fuel, I should be able to get that guy over to Minmus and try to find a hot spot. Also, another suggestion was to take the scanner that I used for the moon, which should have plenty of Delta V left over to get to Minmus, and then go ahead and scan Minmus with that same spacecraft, uh, which is absolutely valid, and I'm absolutely going to do that. So, probably going to move my mining rig to Minmus and going to scan Minmus with that same satellite system now that we have that data there uh, on the moon. Some other suggestions that I don't know if is actually valid, uh, which well, I'll find out in the near future if it is, is that the mining drills generate heat and eventually that's something that I'm not gonna have to be concerned about. Uh, I haven't noticed anything yet, but I haven't rechecked it. So I'll check it after this mission and if it hasn't exploded, 
for pretty much mining for two years on my trip to Duna, then I'm going to say it's going to be okay because I did actually, on the second mining rig, forget to put some heat dissipation panels on that sucker. On the first design, I actually did have some. And the second design, I don't know why it kind of slipped my mind. Uh, I guess I was maybe just a little bit too hurry of uh, getting the build done once I did the research and all that stuff. So uh, that is something that I will definitely look into. Anyways, we have arrived here at Duna. And like I said, I have to do a major correction. So if I perhaps didn't do this correction, well, I've explained this earlier, we would uh, have some serious problems. Uh, we'd have to spend a lot more Delta V trying to land down an Ike than if we were heading in the same direction. Of course, we are going to use Duna to arrow break because we're not heading super fast. And uh, the last time I did it, didn't even bring up any heat indicators. So I don't foresee that being too much of a problem. It seems like when you're starting to hit in the high 3000 plus meters per second is when it becomes a problem. So if I ever get a mission to EVE, I will probably consider not even aero braking at all. You tap the atmosphere at the, what is it, 90,000 meters, and you'll probably just explode because you're probably going to be going something like 4,000 meters a second or something. That's, uh, no. <laughs> That's no. All right, moving on here. Let me see. Let me think uh, some other comments. Oh, um, there was also another suggestion to also scan Kerbin and do some mining uh, with a like plane and then try to sell off the ore. I don't know how economical that would be comparative to doing the contracts, honestly. It seems like I would probably get more out of doing those stupid, stupid, well, they're not stupid, but Doing those missions where I ferry Kerbals up into orbit, even though those don't pay very much, it seems like that would be more beneficial than actually spending the time mining the resources. Because it is rather slow to mine and all that stuff, and it takes a while to fill up those canisters. So, yeah. Uh, and since we're all business, during the next episode, I'm hoping that I get a mission to another body, because I want to do some more science to unlock some more technologies. Now, largely, I've still been completely ignoring the aircraft part of the tech tree. I've been kind of ignoring the probe part of the tech tree. I've really been focusing on the rockets. So I don't know if I'm going to deviate from that anytime soon. I'm pretty sure that I will maintain the series until I unlock every tech in the tree. But... I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. I mean, I think one jewel mission will be enough to unlock the rest of the tech tree if I go to EVE. I'm totally going to EVE in this series because I didn't do it my uh, .22. I mentioned it during a previous episode that I wanted to go to EVE. We're totally doing EVE. So hopefully the contracts point me in that direction as long as it doesn't have something to do with mining on eve or landing down on eve and exploring eve because eve is just too much of a pain in the rear to actually get off but uh if it's something to gilly i'm on it all about it you know so we'll see what we get in the contracts after this and another thing i'm going to do obviously like i said earlier is i'm going to check on my mining rig and see if it has uh done okay and my my biggest concern was the fact that Will the mining rig keep on functioning while I'm away from it? That's my uh, my biggest thing. And if it does that, I'm going to be so happy, so, so happy, because that makes it better than pretty much all the other mods that I've played with, OKS, MKS, and uh, Keythane. Could not stand sitting on the satellite. I mean, you literally had to do it for just so, so very long. It was so very irritating. You couldn't do other things, and it's... You just lose interest. Now I get the the whole like realism factor about it, and I understand people are into it and hardcore and all that stuff. But uh, you know, it's basically like, hey, um, I'm gonna go let my computer run this scan while I walk away and play my Xbox because <laughs> I'm not gonna sit here and you know for like two and a half hours and and watch all the scans. 
So anyways, I'm trying to find a suitable location to land down my base that can support 12 Kerbals. And I have um, a decent amount of fuel left. So I have one little uh, half tank left on the bottom there that has um, the, what is it, the puddle engine. So plenty of fuel to land down on Ike. And I also set this up to where if I ever got a mission to do a base setup on Duna, it has parachutes and stuff. So I can recycle the same exact craft. And it's got a docking port on it. Now, the thing is, I'm not necessarily designing these outposts to be reused, I guess, in the, the fuel sense. Even though they do have the docking ports on them, I could you know, finagle some craft to refuel these ships, essentially. I probably could get this thing back in orbit. I don't know why we say that. But, yeah, so these are kind of becoming permanent fixtures and stuff, and it's, it's the same thing with the, the two bases that I put around the Kerbin uh, local system. So the one I put up in Kerbin and the one I put up in Mimis, like, those were afterthoughts. Those were simply to just complete those contracts. That's kind of all I was interested in to get the cash. And now, i um, kind of wishing that I had spent a little more time. But then again, uh, during those that phase, I didn't have a lot of this technology on re uh, research. So I couldn't do stuff. I like to have, like, the senior docking port and that kind of thing to make things a little more stable. And in typical fashion, I am coming down on a slope. Uh, don't so much want to do this so what I'm going to go ahead and you know I've got plenty of fuel so I'm just going to go ahead and push over to the left here and it looks like we've got plenty of flat space and I just like to set this thing down so it's not going to tilt over and break the solar panels and all that just in case there is some foreseeable reason that I'm potentially going to be using this base in the future I don't know you know and uh, something else kind of occurred to me as I've been playing this, is I've been spending my time like setting up. A... <laughs> I've been spending my time naming the flags in a silly manner. But what I should have been doing is I should have been marking them in the respective biome. I should have been tagging them. This is this particular biome. This is this biome. And that would have been much more helpful than uh, Jeb is cool, Jeb is a dick, uh, I can see the space center from here. <laughs> Although, I know that that is the mountain biome. Uh, there's no secret there or anything. But for future missions to other bodies, uh, I'm probably going to start naming the flags appropriately. Um, and kind of disregarding the whole, like, I can't name the flag thing. Yeah. It's my hope that you guys continue to give me some fantastic advice throughout this series. There are things that I simply do not know about some of the newer stuff in Kerbal Space Program, so it is extremely helpful in the comments when you tell me about some of these things. You know, small little details like, uh, you know, just trimming the resource indicator to see where the best spots are. I didn't know that existed. You know, I didn't know that I couldn't, I mean, before that, I didn't even realize that uh, I couldn't get the data unless I actually clicked back on the satellite to see the data and then clicked back between the rocket and seeing the data real time. That's fantastic. Anyways, we got our mission money. That wraps up this episode. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.